So, got an interesting new job in the foundry this week. Um, it's an antique letterpress chase, which is a part that holds the the type in place for printing uh, three by five cards, letters, whatever it might be. Uh, it's a part for an antique letterpress uh, that uh, another local YouTuber is restoring. Uh, he goes by Cast Iron Machines. You ought to check out his channel. He's on Instagram too, under the same name. Very interesting stuff if you're into uh, antique machine tools and uh, you know all things 1920s and 30s, steam engines, old machines, etc. Uh, he restores them, travels around, collects them. Pretty amazing uh, young man there to keep an eye out on. So let's have a look. how that raise works with the levers there. Your one lever with a lathe you want it to go forward and backwards so you select the step you want. Mine are offset because it, it changes with the ground a little bit, the elevation because it's a gravel floor. Uh -huh. Anyway, you set the step and then your shifter, there's this ball on the counter shaft that goes back and forth. And whichever way it goes, it basically expands, it's like an inner expanding brake drum. And that's how it engages it. So we have a straight belt and then a half twist belt, one forward and one reverse. For two different directions, right? Yeah. So there's forward. And this is kind of a, I wouldn't call it quite fancy, but it has all the bells and whistles for its era. That's the lead screw. Now that's running, and the combination of gears here dictates how many threads per inch you're going to get. There's yeah. a chart that tells you there. And you have a clutch, so that clutch will, will pass along the outside. Or you have a half nut for doing the threading. And this one even has a power cross speed for doing facing. Oh, wow. Pretty slick for 1915. And then you just pull it out and shift it the other way and it goes into reverse. That's really cool. So who made this one? Myers in Pennsylvania. Okay. It was a First World War production lathe. So a few things when I was restoring it, how extremely porous certain parts of the casting were. Like the headstock, pretty vital. And I think because it was the war effort, that's the only reason they kind of let it slide, because yeah. it was pretty bad. Funny. Wow. Yeah, Myers in Pennsylvania. So it has a three, number three Morse taper, all those drills, which is the same as the drill press. The drill press is 1890s or something. It's patented in 1883, so it's the oldest one in here. Geez, look at the table on that thing. What's that? The table on that thing. Yeah, it that's, it's, that's it's, awesome. it looks like a moon surface, eh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The size is nice, and then you can swivel it, and you can also spin it. So if you lock something down between swiveling and spinning, you can almost use it like a radial arm drill to see the oh. hole of its clamp. Wow. Which is really clamp. And this one even has a... It's hard to see it. There's a center right here, a dead center that's part of the base. It's built into the base. Okay. So you can swivel this right out of the way and run a, uh, um, like a banister post. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, right. Oh, it's like centered underneath the spindle? Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. yeah. This grinder is the most recent. Oh, yeah, I watched your uh, video on that one. It really takes all the system has to offer at the moment. Neat though, it's Canadian made, isn't it? Yeah. That's something, huh? Well, it's amazing how much you've crammed in here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I could. Do it of necessity. Yeah, I gotta. I'm working on my shed <laughs> to try to make better use of that space. Yeah. 
buddy with the wood shop. That's a maple pattern that I shaped up for a no. handle on an old. Look at that. Nice. Double spindle shaper. So, oh. see, it was in the early, like, practicing, you know, uh, where things are going to settle and yeah. where the ferocity takes up. The split pattern? Yeah. Oh, nice. Uh -huh. Probably yes. 80 dirty, dirty pop cans in this. <laughs> It's a counter shaft hanger of some sort, so no pattern. Like the lathes and the and the grinder here, they have the little hangers that hold their miniature, their on and off shaft called counter shaft. Yeah. So you got counter shaft or a small section of pulley, but you, it's unlikely you'd have more than three of those mounts in a row because you can't do any adjustment. That's yeah. fixed bearing, whereas all these ones can adjust. Yeah, core prints here for the mounting mm -hmm. holes. Yeah, it looks like it's been nailed, nailed together to keep from losing half of it or something. Yeah. I picked up uh, the second version of this pattern uh, from Clay from Cast Iron Machines. Uh, it's a nice, nice pattern he made. I've I did a little bit of work with some wax, putting in some fillets and there's some very small gaps that needed filling, but it's all ready to mold up now. Um, Version one, I had a little bit of trouble with. Uh, this one has a little more draft. I think maybe a little more draft than, than he wanted to put on it, but I, he was nice to me and decided to make it easier. So we're gonna try again. This one has the shrink allowance built into it. So this one's gonna get melted down when I when I pour this one. We got Clay's pattern here. Uh, this is version two of the chase for the Kelsey letterpress three by five he's got it stamped in here hopefully that'll show up in the casting got the fillets and a little bit of gaps filled in with wax all ready to go here
The only thing I don't like is this flask. But the alignment ends are not centered and they're they're on the they should be on the long end. There we go. Beautiful. Perfect. Mold cavity. Much better this time. Got them all set up there, ready to pour.
not actually brass. I decided to go with aluminum bronze on these. This thing was originally a cast iron, the, the chase. Uh, aluminum bronze is pretty durable stuff, so if brass was going to be too soft or weak or whatever, the aluminum bronze will hold up a little better. Well, I gotta get out of here, let the smoke clear, wait for these to cool down. And uh, I'll be back out here in a little while to shake these things out and, and uh, see what we got here. Get you a little close up action. The surface finish is real nice. Oh, uh, you can actually uh, make out the little seam there, even though I tried to wax it. But yeah, this one came out a lot nicer than the brass one we tried, the first version. Uh, you will see that where the uh, sharp corners of the pattern that weren't radiused uh, along these upper and outer inner and outer edges in, in places they didn't quite uh, fill out or they did and they shrank back a little bit um, you know that's just due to not having a little radius on those edges if it's a problem we can always go for a, a version 3 but um, you know if there's machining allowance built into this then I don't think it should be a problem I hope not, anyway. Uh, let's have a look at the other side. Oh, is that, is that a 3x5? Let's see if I can get a better look at that. You can make it out. It's not the clearest. But yeah. Not bad. I'm I'm pretty happy with it. But like I said, if these little, like, rounded over spots, if that's a problem, that's not a problem for me to try again. Um, but we shall see. So Clay's got his part, uh, I can tell he's happy with it. He's got it uh, machined up just a little bit. Uh, I think he might have trimmed down those funny looking corners just enough to clean them up. He's got it drilled and tapped and installed on his uh, letter press machine and it seems like it's going to work. So good deal. Um, pretty satisfied with that. make sure you check out Clay's channel uh, here on YouTube and his Instagram page. Uh, he goes by Cast Iron Machines. I'll put a link in the description. He's going to have a video on the restoration of the letterpress up there eventually, I think. Uh, got footage from the first attempt pour where we had the flask run out. Bit of drama there. I'm not sure if he's going to include that in his video or not. But uh, the part wound up being too small anyway because... Uh, we hadn't got shrink allowance built into the pattern. Second one fits better. I didn't already mention it. And also, you should see the beautiful job that he's no doubt going to do on that letter press to get it, uh, you know, nice, shiny, looking new and working like brand new again. Um, what else? Yeah, check out his channel.